So, the car is almost ready to be driven. I just have a few more things that I know need to be fixed. Number one, I have a leak in the upper radiator hose at the point where it meets the car. Um, just a slight drip that's kind of puddling up around the engine block. Uh, so I picked up an aftermarket upper radiator hose. I'm gonna swap out. I'm gonna try to do that without losing much coolant, but you know how that goes. The second thing is the engine temperature sensor. Uh, when I start the car up and let it run for five or 10 minutes, the temperature gauge just, gauge just slowly rises all the way to red line. However, I can still touch the upper radiator hose and it's cool. Um, so after speaking with some folks, that sounds like it is the sensor that goes to the gauge or the instrument cluster rather than uh, the, the temperature control module. Uh, but just in case, I did pick up uh, one of those that actually runs, uh, uh, tells the ECU what the temperature of the engine itself is. Now the problem with me trying to fix the temperature gauge that uh, runs to the ECU is uh, I look in here and that right there, that right there with the wire running up to the sensor right there, that is the instrument cluster temperature sensor, not the engine block that runs to the ECU. Now I look back here, it should be just down the line a little ways, but I do not see anything there. So I'm just gonna replace that one and see where that gets me. Now, one of the things I hope to do in this video for you, if you're watching this, is to provide you an in-depth guide on how to get that swapped out. Uh, you can either remove the entire uh, intake manifold and replace the gaskets and do a bunch of cleanup in there. However, I just want to get this thing on the road and I'm not interested in taking that whole thing apart right now. I will do that at a later point in the flame trap and uh, you know gaskets and all the other things. Uh, however, for this, I just want to swap out the temperature sensor and I will show you the exact tools uh, for how I did it. You can find the swivels, the, the uh, the socket size uh, and, and everything specific to what I use to get it out because it, from what I'm told, it can be pretty complicated. All right, here it is. Three eighths inch ratchet, longest extension I have, a swivel, and then the socket placed onto the sensor. Put the socket on first and then feed the extension and the swivel down onto the socket. Old and new. Can you tell which one's old and which one's new? probably guess why the sensor wasn't working. All right, so here it is once again. Um, 3 8 inch ratchet, the longest extension I have. I think this was a little overkill. You could probably get away with a little bit shorter, though I think it'd be convenient to have this. Uh, I guess not overkill, um, just not absolutely necessary. You can get away with a little bit shorter, uh, but I, I, I did like having this. Uh, the swivel, uh, the 5 8 socket. Now the 5 8 socket, interestingly, was what I used to put the temperature sensor back in the car. To take it out, this was too small. We use this here, the 17 millimeter. Um, and there you go. Now, for this piece here, Looks like there's a bunch of corrosion there on the sensor itself. Obviously there's grease all over the place down here. I don't think there was a problem with the connection here. It seemed uh, clean enough for it to still uh, uh, make, con make connection to the power. Um, but that is gonna be the reason it wasn't working very well. Now when you're putting this back in, uh, if your car is like mine, you're gonna have a bunch of grease around the outside. Make sure you are careful when pushing this back in to not stuff a bunch of grease in there along with the tip of the sensor.